Okay, let's start recording. Okay, so last class, this is where we left off. We had just uh, kind of drawn out all of our our little info here, and we were going to, you know, try to make this guy into our a coin. And we the, the beauty is we can also use this for uh, the front cover of our poster. So that's pretty cool that we can do that. So uh, here is what we have so far. Let's see, control A, unhide all. Unfreeze all, so I can just select that. And I'll cue that. So this is what we're gonna make our coin out of. So we've outlined our text here so we can hide this guy. All right, so the next thing we want to do is I want to make a the the coin itself. So I'm just going to use a cylinder. Actually, I'm in the perspective view, so that's not going to work. So I'm going to go to my front view. I'm just going to drag from the center here and then create myself a cylinder. Remember, it's a two-step operation. And then click to pull out like that. So if I alt, middle mouse, and rotate, Right, I can now hit W, grab this guy, pull further back like so, and now we just want to design our coin. And our coin is going to be something fairly, fairly simple. It's just going to be a basic cylinder. I'm going to remove these height segments from the side. And um, there's two ways that we can do our the, this. Uh, we can build our geometry into uh, the coin here or do a low version of it maybe something with let me see 20 let's do 30 sides so i can use this as my low poly and my high poly so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to throw an edit poly modifier on this guy and you guys know the drill from here, uh, right click, inset. I'm just gonna inset it a little bit, right? Enough to give me a little uh, a little lip, the check mark, and then I'm gonna bevel this guy in. It's gonna go in a little bit and then pull like that. And for mine, I'm just gonna do a little, something a little cooler. I'm gonna maybe make a double ridge you know, maybe make a double ridge for my coin. And you guys can, you know, do these insets however you want. Make it look, you know, do your own cool, uh, you know, uh, version of that. And, uh, you know, have fun with it. You know what I'm saying? So maybe bring this guy out like that so it's not so deep. All right. So this is uh, essentially the front of my coin. And what I want to do now, I'm going to hit P to go in my perspective view. I'm going to select this uh, this back plane here. I'm just going to pull this guy in because it's supposed to be a, you know, it's a coin. So it's supposed to be relatively thin. I'm just going to symmetry this guy. Throw a symmetry modifier on. And the reason I'm not grabbing everything and doing the symmetry is because I'm going to do something different on the back. What I'm going to do for the back is I'm just going to use the sword, the Z, and the flower for the back. So I'm, I'm going to you know, first finish making the front and then use the pieces that I already have from the front for the back. So you guys will see uh, how that works. You know what I'm saying? All right. So here we go. We have made ourselves uh, the coin on both sides here and the beauty is now anything I do to one side automatically gets done to the other so if I uh, if I do like my double chamfer here that technique I showed you guys where I do my my first chamfer like that like a quad chamfer right and then chamfer again this time not a quad chamfer Oops. 
Let's do another chamfer and then like that. And then just delete this, these guys in the middle. I don't need it. So now let me show you what, I, what happens when I hit turbo smooth. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to, you know, kind of illustrate the differences in some of the edges we're going to get based on the chamfer that we do. So you see how, like, we've got this nice, you know, transition, right? Now let's go to the next level, we, you know, um, since I since I do have two levels, I'll show you the difference in those, uh, in, in the different types of edges. So if I just do this and this, this is another way of locking those edges, right? And you guys will see the difference between the double chamfer and then the, the single chamfer. So now let's see that, All right? So you can see that the double, like, because it's, it's only one step, but the double chamfer now, it gives me this extra little uh, bevel in here that looks kind of cool, right? And it's something that, you know, a lot of the times they use in the advertising world. Let's hit one on the keyboard and then just move this. I'm actually gonna let me delete this guy here. So okay, there we go. So as you guys can see, I've got myself a a nice uh, Zelda coin here. And now the next thing I want to do is just start doing my extrudes and my shell modifiers. And you guys remember we have uh, references that we were using for our Zelda coin. So just a good, you know, a quick Google search into Zelda. This is the one I liked right here. So it's this guy, Oops. and then this guy, All right? So this is the one we did, and then the back would be this guy. So this is the reference, once again, if you guys are wondering what reference I'm talking about. And we're going to do some something similar to this colorway where it's kind of bronzed and, you know, um, yeah, but you know the only thing that I did a little different from theirs is I added an extra little inset right there uh, to mine. So I've got this extra, extra little lip. So uh, let us now go back into this right quick because I want to uh, I want to fix some of these edge issues that we're having here. So. Whoops. Let's go into our edit poly. I'm going to show you guys another cool trick. So if I have these and I want to connect all of these edges just to get clean topology, right? The normal way or the regular way to do that, you'd be, you know, you would select the edge you wanted, the other edge, right click, connect, and then you do that all the way down this uh, this surface. But there's a quicker way where you that for you to do that. So you can delete all of those. I'm going to select this uh, this edge. And then I'm going to control and select or my border and I'm going to control and select my edges so it takes me into my edge mode. And then what I can do there is I can deselect those three and because I made it 30, it's kind of even on both sides. And now if I hit the bridge function Right, it's going to bridge all of those for me. I'm going to hit three on my keyboard, right click, and I can cap that. Select my border, right, right click, cap that. So all of that I can do with a few button moves. So now that's what my topology looks like, something nice and clean, and um, it's not an eyesore. So the next thing I want to kind of do now is just kind of assign some 
material colors to this stuff. Oh, whoops. All right, so let's grab some of the materials that we have from our scene and use that. So I'm going to actually let's create a new one. I need a bronze, which is pretty much everything. So I'm just going to do like a, a bronzed. Let's just do bronze. Mm, it's metal. So. And let's maybe make it a little more. Yeah, yeah. All right. If I wanted, I could, you know, bring the picture in and and color pick it. But I'm just gonna use my eye this time. All right. So now, uh, what I want to do is I just want to take my image now, look at my image, and just see. Okay, it's just an extrude. Right, there's it's just extruded a flat um, extrude that it's got on it. So all I need to do for that guy is throw a uh, throw a shell modifier on. Boom, just like that. And then uh, maybe two, two. Hmm. Two, four, and then I'll give myself some room to kind of push that guy in if I need to. All right. So with uh, our text, however, they they already kind of come with these. Uh, These function okay, so I use regular text instead of text plus, so these don't have that extra extrude function to it, but they're all essentially the the same kind of extrude. Let's see if I can find a better better image of the other side. Okay, yeah, they're just pretty much, you know, just an extrude or a shell modifier on there. Ooh, I found another alternative for the coin that we can do. But let's finish this one because it's a little easier. I'm trying to find uh, just a higher res image of the coin. Okay. Yeah, they're just extrudes. So uh, what we can do is just throw a uh, an we can throw an extrude modifier on here, All right? And it'll either extrude it'll extrude it for us. We can even throw. Let's cut this guy out, and then we can throw a bevel modifier on here as well, All right? And this gives us a few more options whenever it comes to. Uh, extruding this guy so we can do an extra outline and we can do our primary height and then we can do a level two height that we can then start to maybe give a little bit of bevel to and I think I'm inclined to do this for uh, you know just for uh, whenever we have to try to bake it it'll just make it look a little more a little smoother you yeah. know so Maybe reduce the height. Okay, and then we can do another, you know, another height. Because we're working with such little numbers, it's you know. But 
might just leave it at one. Alright, so we can even curve the sides if we wanted. So we can have linear sides, curved sides. Alright, and now we've got something that's a little smoother, the transition's a little bit better. Alright, so, you know, I don't want to have to do that over and over, so I can just. Uh, just control select all of these guys. I'm just going to do that for the text. And I can just paste. And some of them are going to be a little wonky, so I might have to go back in and, you know, point. Very slight. So if I turn on high quality, you guys should see. Gonna select those guys and place them on. All right, make sure it's intersecting. got my little gem and you know we can do something cool because the the one that they have on online um, it doesn't really have any you know colored gems or anything in there but um, you know I might want to put like a little little gem in there make it pop a little bit more Just looks a little bit cooler. Alright, so uh, with this guy, we might want to extrude it out just a little bit more. Let's extrude that length out just a wee bit more. And I just wanted to match uh, the Z like that. And we also have uh, this guy here. And since we're, you know, we're kind of doing our own take on it already, so I'm just going to connect. You connect those like that. And 
And maybe, let's see what I could get if I extruded this guy like that. Just like that. Just an extrude. It'll kind of give us like this, uh, this feeling that the sword is kind of, you know, up there, but it might interfere with our new gem if we do too much. It would be cool if the sword looked like it was, uh, it was out like that, but if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's fine. We can leave it. You know, it's either or. You know, you can pick to do the sword or the, the gem, but uh, it's up to you. And then I've got my laces here that I want to bring to the to the forefront of this guy. Alright, got my laces on. I'm just going to copy this shell and then throw it on uh, these guys. Let me actually I'm gonna cut cut the edit poly modifiers from these, and then I'm just gonna attach them all as uh, as individual as a line object. So all of these objects are now one, and then I can throw my shell modifier on here. So let's copy this bevel profile. I'll use this bevel profile on there instead. There we go. Make sure. Just might wanna just pull it further back. Make sure that it's actually in this guy like so. All right. All right, so, you know, another problem that I'm right now seeing is I've got some really sharp edges that might not look too good whenever we try to bake these down. So I might see if I can throw a chamfer modifier on these guys and, and maybe get something, something decent out of there. So do uniform, and I'm just gonna reduce the amount of that chamfer. Do two segments, All right? And you, you guys can see the difference, right? Like you guys can see the difference between no chamfer, right? You see how flat everything looks? And then if I throw that chamfer on it, it's gonna start catching highlights, right? And that looks a whole lot better. So I might just take this chamfer and throw it on everything else and, you know, give myself something a little more interesting. Here we go. So for these guys though, I might need to clean up some geo. going to clean up some of this stuff so I'm just going to connect this and this will just help those uh those corners kind of you know smooth out a little bit better I'm still going to throw a, a modifier on it at the end of the day but this kind of helps Mm 
I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything. Is this not welded to something? It must be this chambers. Okay, so there's obviously something that isn't isn't welded. It's this guy. Connect maybe those two. If I connect these two, maybe we'll have uh, less weirdness going on. So now it's happening there. Oops. Now what I can do is now. Alt C. I'm just going to cut from right here to right here. And then one control, actually select all of these guys. And then I'm just going to make sure there's nothing crazy going on. So if I weld it, it looks right. All right. So maybe I just need to divert where that is, where that's happening. So. Gonna connect these two. Connect. Right. Maybe I need to. Let's all cue this guy. Let's see what's going on. Okay. I'm actually gonna cut that edit poly out. Alright, so we've got a clean edit poly and a clean shell now. Alright. Maybe instead of the shell, I use our bevel. Maybe that's what my issue is. And if that is what it is, let's actually hide this guy. Let's grab our bevel, copy that, and then paste that onto this guy. All right, so now the next thing I need to do is I need to just increase my starting outline, my level one outline here, to come back out like so. And then use this second it's a little smaller Something like that. So it's just to give myself some more, some more edges to work with. All right. I think I'm missing my my laces now. Okay. So we've got our front made now. Now let's look at making uh, the back. Let me see this image. I'm going to save this image. I'm going to throw this all these images in the chat as well. So. Okay. 
So there's all sorts of designs that, you know, people have done. Some of them have that chic eye. Some of them have that little falcon logo thing that they have, but we're just going to use what we are, we've already made here just to keep this uh, course a little, or this little part of the tutorial, a little shorter and sweeter. You know, we're just going to use the, the one that we have. And actually, now that I see it, it seems the sword itself has a gem in the middle that I can throw. I'm going to use this gem. Shift, copy, and then right in here, just rotate this guy in place, like so. This guy's not. This guy's not straight. Let's go. Geopoly this, grab that, cap, reduce these guys, and then geopoly that. All right. And just like that, I can, you know, easily fix anything that's a little wonky or has an error or anything like that. So I'm just going to pull these guys. Uh, if I hit R on the keyboard, I can scale these guys up just to make it a little a little taller that way and then, uh, now we've got our sword gem so now we've got something cool on both both of the gems okay so let us uh, continue so now what I want to do is I'm going to take our sword and then I want the Z part of it so I'm just going to throw in edit poly it's actually just let's just duplicate all the stuff that we need right now I'm just going to select all of that and I need it on the other side so I'm just going to shift drag make a copy of it and then uh, I can just, oops, okay, just rotate it on the Z axis, 180 degrees, like that. And then I'm going to select my Zelda text. Mm -hmm. And I can go into my line tool and I can delete all the, all the ones that I don't need there. All right, and just like that, I've got my back. It's really that simple. And then... I can just uh, bring this in and I want to scale this guy up. Scale this guy up like so. All right, so another thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm in the center. So I'm just going to group these guys together. Coin. Back. And, you know, the truth is we can make either of these guys the front or the back. So, um, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not a, this might be the front for all I know. So I'm just going to align it. So the align tool is right here is these, these two uneven uh, stacks on top of each other. So for that, I'm just going to hit the align. I've got my object selected and I'm just going to select the object that I want to align it to just like that. And then I'm going to hit center center make sure it's in the center so i've made sure it's in the center of the x y and z of that object so now i can pull my uh my emblem and sword out like that and i know that now everything is perfectly uh in the center of that so just like that we have finished the high poly of our coin. All right, so let's turn on high quality. All right. 
I missing? Yep, I'm missing um I'm missing the the laces. So here's a cool thing I'll show you guys how to do if you're missing something like that. Alright, I'm gonna shift to drag it, make it a copy. And what I can do is now I can align it to this guy, but I can align it to the pivot and align it on the X actually. It's it's our it's our group. I'm gonna explode my group and I'm gonna use the sword. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab my laces again. They were floating. I know they were probably hard to see, but they're floating right here. And I just want to make sure. So I'm just gonna align it to this guy, and then I want to align it to its pivot, and then align it on the X, Y, and Z. And then I'm gonna match the scale as well. And it's generally going to try to put it back in the in a similar place. And all I've got to do now is just pull it out just a little bit like so. And now I've got my laces back. All right, so I match the scale. So it's going to say, all right, this is the scale of this compared to this. And it's going to try to match that. And because I've already done it relative to this one, it's going to try to you know make it um, even to that. So that's what we are seeing there. And just like that, we have our Zelda coin. So the next part of this is creating the low poly version of this, right? And because it's a coin, right, everything, our low poly is going to be super, super, super easy. So I'm going to select our coin that we already have, Control and V, right, to make a copy of it, hit OK. And then I'm just going to delete all of this extra stuff on top. So now I've got a shape that looks like this. All right. So this is one way to make your uh, low poly model, which is using the high poly that you have. And because you've worked non-destructively from the start, right? you can go back and then you can still use this guy as your uh, low poly. Now I can select the, you know, I can just throw the symmetry on, right? And now I know I have my low poly and I can use this, right? Another thing you're gonna have to do with this is you're gonna have to go in here and then remove uh, these extra, these extra loops that you have inside of your your model. So you're gonna have to remove these because they're not gonna do you really any good for your low poly. So you know these this guy, this guy, hit F3, this guy, this guy, this guy. Just all these inside ones I'm just gonna loop. Remove those. Select this right because we're not gonna turbo smooth any of this stuff. I don't need these anymore. Right. In fact, right. In fact, I don't need a lot of this anymore. Right. The the thing is, the 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 low poly, the baking process is going to capture so much of this information that all of this extra stuff that we have here, we really don't need. So let me hit seven on my keyboard, and this is going to bring up your poly count, your vert count, and your information. And I want to show a little bit more of that. So I'm going to hit my configure viewport right here. It's going to bring, uh, bring up my viewport configurations. And these tabs allow you to show you different things on your screen. So I'm going to go into my statistics uh, right here. And what I want to do is I want to have it show me not only the total which is the total of all the polygons in the scene, but I want it to show the total and the selection. Right now, if I have it set to selection, whatever I have selected, it's going to show me that poly count right over here. But I want it to show me the, the total, which is everything in the scene or everything, and then whatever I have selected, right? And I can turn on my triangle count, my edge count, my vert count, which I don't need, frames, uh, per second I don't need that either 
right? So, and I want to make sure it's show an active viewport is, is selected here. And then I'm just going to apply it, right? And then hit OK, hit Alt, Alt W, right? So now I have my, my low poly selected. And this is just a copy of this guy, right? This is just a copy of that. So the reason I'm, 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 I'm pulling this guy apart to show you is I'm going to show you where we, uh, where we started from. So this guy's at 448, right here, right? And this is the current low poly. But I'm gonna show you that you don't need that many. You can use even less than that and still get a good result baking, right? And we might not bake it this class, we'll probably bake it next class, but um, that's the idea. So now I'm just gonna start control backspace. I'm gonna start getting rid of a lot of this stuff. I don't need a lot of this stuff on uh, on the inside at all actually and then let's see just gonna actually I'm gonna select I'm gonna select this interface here Oops. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull them pull this interface right because right now all I've got is like two poly so but I'm just gonna pull this right over my Zelda because my projection is gonna capture all of that so I may want to you know maybe make it like a halfway like that because I wanted to average all of that so now let's look at this this guy so this guy is now what front and back this guy is now 200 versus 448 all right and I'm, I'm gonna even try to go even lower I'm gonna try to go even lower with this guy so um, let's see where I can even relieve myself of some more edges so I've got this guy right here it's not bad This transition, that's not bad. Yeah, these. All right, there's, so there's one more edge I can get rid of to reduce more polys for this guy. So I'm just going to hit, throw an edit poly on my symmetry modifier, and then select this middle guy, control, and backspace, just like that. So now our final poly count for this guy, right, is 238. We first reduced it down to 268, not good enough. 42, uh, 448, that's not good enough. We've ended up with 238 polys, about 476 triangles. All right. So now that we've got our low poly made, I think uh, what we're going to do next class is uh, unwrap and then texture this guy. So we've made our low poly low poly underscore coin just like that we've made ourselves a low poly coin and then if i hit control i i'm going to go to my tools and then i'm going to use my uh rename objects right here it's going to bring up this dialog box for you and i'm just going to put high poly underscore coin Maybe do an underscore, and then I will do it numbered. I don't want to pref prefix. Maybe I do want to prefix. I'll do Zelda, and then underscore. So now if I rename all of this, if I rename it, and if I pull up my list for you guys, my, uh, my layers, so it should have all of my Zelda high poly coins, and then my Zelda low poly coin so I'm just gonna do Zelda underscore low poly and that is it so we have officially made ourselves a high poly and a low poly coin all right just gonna save this guy 
and close this guy out. Right, this selection and here is our high poly. All right, and whenever you guys are done with this, remember you want to take your you want to take a high res shot of this guy. All right, you want to make sure you've got everything kind of set up and you know. And the cool thing is, if we wanted to, um, I could show you guys how to make this thing like airtight and ready to print. But uh, we'll stick to this for now and go through the high poly low poly process. I might just show that in a tutorial in another video. And that just requires you, you know, merging a lot of this stuff together. So uh, whenever it prints, it's not printing stuff on the back and, and different things like that, you know, so. Uh, you know, this tutorial I showed you guys how to kind of draw your shapes from splines and, uh, you know, use bevel functions and, and model rips into the geometry. I showed you guys how to use your line tool, uh, you know, create the coin, the symmetry modifier, different things like that. And I know, once again, I'm throwing a lot of information at you, but I, I promise if you guys stick with this stuff, you guys will start to understand it. Uh, just a little bit, uh, just a little bit better. So, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Does it look like that's graphite? Now you guys can check these out. It has some pretty, in my opinion, terrible, terrible um, kind of ways to look at the. Yeah, this one's not bad. It kind of makes it look, you know gamey you know what i'm saying like it's like a, a comic book right and if you guys wanted to make a comic book right like yo there's so much there's so many possibilities with this stuff right you know the acrylic one's not bad pastels ugh. Who, what would you need that for like sometimes i'm like why would you even who would i ever use that for but then there's one like the acrylic that i'm like ah it's not a bad like comic book line starter you know and we do flat colors Oh, this is it's the bounding box. Hidden line. Clay. All right, so that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, let me stop this recording.